Now, I would like to start with the second part of this topic, respiration. That is, how the breathing or gaseous exchange takes place in humans as well as in plants. So, let's begin with it. The mechanism which occurs in humans is a very simple process that is known as breathing. What is breathing exactly? Taking oxygen or air in and releasing carbon dioxide out from the lungs. So, during this complete process, there are two activities run together. One is known as external respiration and other one is known as internal respiration. What is external and what is internal? During the external respiration, the gaseous exchange occurs at the alveoli in lungs. It means during inhalation, when air reaches to the alveoli, then they start showing the mechanism of diffusion and pass on oxygen from alveoli to blood capillaries. From the blood capillaries, they take carbon dioxide and once the carbon dioxide get collected, they again release it out from the nose. In the same manner, when we talk about internal respiration concept, internal respiration concept says that gaseous exchange must occur at the tissue level only. What does it mean? It means that whatever the blood cells carrying oxygen, they must have to supply this oxygen to each and every cell of the body. Once these cells start receiving the oxygen from the blood capillaries, they give it to the cells and in return, they will take carbon dioxide from the cells and take it through veins to the lungs. Once this mechanism over, we said that internal respiration also ends up. Now, I would like to explain the concept of internal and external respiration with the help of this diagram. In this diagram, you can able, easy a, able to see as air moving in, that means inhalation occurs in the process of breathing, air moves in from the nasal passage and from the trachea, it is start entering to the body parts. The thoracic region, that means the chest region of any living organism or in basically the humans, they are having this long tube-like structure known as trachea. These tracheas are having the cartilaginous ring-like structure. These rings are responsible to avoid the collapse of the internal membranes of the trachea. Once this mechanism continues, that means the supply of air start moving in, the trachea further bifurcated into the bronchi. These bronchi are receiving this oxygen or air and move on to the lungs. In the lungs, these bronchi get bifurcated into long, long stream-like structures and these streams are known as bronchioles. These bronchioles ends up to a balloon-like structure known as alveoli, which is rich in alveolar sacs. These alveolar sacs receive the oxygen and go for the gaseous exchange from the blood capillaries. When they receive carbon dioxide, then this thoracic or chest cavity, this cavity start compression or reducing the surface area so that all the collected carbon dioxide get collect together and move out from the nose. This mechanism of releasing carbon dioxide is known as exhalation. During inhalation and exhalation, complete thoracic cavity of any human is responsible. So, this diaphragm is going to end the thoracic region of the humans. Now, I would like to explain the complete mechanism of gaseous exchange in alveoli little bit in detail. Here you can see as the oxygen enters in the alveoli, its membrane is quite permeable. As the same, the membrane of blood capillaries are also quite permeable. So, due to the high percentage of permeability, they can easily go for the exchange of oxygen with the, with the carbon dioxide. Alveoli gives oxygen to the blood cells 
and blood cells will release carbon dioxide to the alveoli once they this diffusion mechanism occurs the carbon dioxide is start moving out from the alveoli and moving out from the nose in a process of exhalation i would like to define the topic diffusion very uh, in a very simple terms just because to remind you once how and the diffusion is what diffusion is basically a process of movement of molecules from their higher concentration towards their lower concentration here you can see that oxygen is moving out from the alveoli and getting into the blood and carbon dioxide is moving in the uh, alveoli from the blood now as the animals can show this mechanism of gaseous exchange plant also show the same mechanism in plants they are having a specific structures or the regions where this can be occur like in the stomata in the leaves they are having these type of guard cells these guard cells constitute a stomata which is responsible for the gaseous exchange in the same manner stem is also having the openings known as lenticels these openings are also helping in the mechanism of gaseous exchange along with that roots they also carry structures known as root hairs these root hairs are also helping in the gaseous exchange in the soil now one major question arises why respiration do not show any significance during the day time while it shows significance during the night time i would like to show you with the help of this diagram since in the morning time or in the day time photosynthesis is the major process in which the intake of the carbon dioxide is very fast and the release of oxygen is of high rate since the process of photosynthesis is very active and fast during the day time as compared to that of the respiration in the day that is a result of showing or giving you the evidences of release of oxygen instead of the release of carbon dioxide but during the night time the complete condition changes what will happen photosynthesis do not occurs as stomata are almost closed since they are closed no gaseous exchange can occurs very easily so the rate of respiration shows its significance and we can easily understand or we can easily get the evidences of release of carbon dioxide in the night and absorption of oxygen this way i can explain you easily why photosynthesis is showing their significance in the daytime and respiration shows respiration shows its significance during the night time now the most important word and a new term that you people must have to understand is atp what is atp adenosine triphosphate this adenosine triphosphate is basically a nucleic acid derivative a molecule which is made up of adenosine a nitrogenous base and a triphosphate molecule you can see the structure here it is adenosine it is linked with three phosphate groups this molecule usually found in the mitochondria and considered as the energy currency of the cell when this molecule is start storing inside the mitochondria till the time it is not required when the energy is required by the cell to perform any of the activity then this atp molecule start showing the breakdown of their inorganic phosphate groups and with the release of these phosphate groups they release approx the energy of 30.5 kJ as a result atp get converted into adp and finally they will help in the release of energy which is utilized by the cell for performing their activities i hope these notes are going to help you in understanding how the process of respiration occurs and what exactly the concept behind the topic respiration thank you and have a nice day